What's up everybody, today we're going to talk about the performance of the Nike KD16 and simultaneously also for those that are interested, performance of Nike KD16 on Pearl. So let's get straight into it and start with traction performance. So for the pattern, it's a pretty crazy looking pattern that symbolizes the clockwork inside of KD when he's playing basketball and symbolizes how everything is working together when he's playing at such a high level. I think that's a pretty cool idea and also as for performance, essentially what it is, it's a radial traction pattern with good multi-directional coverage, so it also performs well on court. There are actually three different types of outsoles on the KD16. There is what we have on the All Pearls, which is a mix of a translucent and solid rubber outsole. Then we have full solid rubber outsoles, which I also have a colorway of. And then we have the full translucent, which is, as I said, the only one I haven't been able to try yet. Are there differences in performance between the three setups? Essentially, what I could notice is that the translucent, or like the mix of translucent and solid rubber, which we have on the All Pearls, it picks up a little bit more dust than the full solid rubber outsole and it's not as grippy on dusty cords as the full solid rubber. However, these perform better on clean cords in my opinion, that's what I experienced with them practicing and playing in official league games. They do bite better if the cord is clean. Are they an option for outdoors? I would only recommend the full solid rubber shoes for outdoors as the pattern is very shallow, so to say. So essentially there are a lot of grooves and a lot of patterns. So if they wear off, it's not that bad as you still have a lot of coverage. But as I said, they're not very deep, um, so they will wear off quickly. That's why I only recommend the full solid rubber outsole as that's also the hardest material to bend just with your fingers. And I think they will last the longest on outer cords or maybe you can try to get an XDR version if you want to play with them only outdoors. Let's get to the next aspect of the shoe, which is the cushioning setup, which is probably the biggest change when we're talking about the KD line from the past models. As in the last few years, we always had a full length zoom struggle setup all the way through the midsole, all the way underneath your foot, which was insanely comfortable, also very bouncy, and I was a big fan of it. We had it since the KD12, as I said. And this year we have a dual density setup, which means that in the midfoot and heel area, so around here, we have air strobel, which is the same setup, or essentially it feels pretty similar to what we had in the Jordan Zion 2, which was pretty comfortable, but overall the shoe felt rather clunky, which is not the case here. In the forefoot, we have a zoom air unit right around here, pretty much covers the entire area and it also feels really comfortable and feels more like the zoom struggle we were used to since the KD12. And all that is covered in a Kushlong foam midsole. So as I said, it's a really comfortable setup and it's very soft. I'm not entirely sure why they changed it up. Maybe KD wanted the shoes to be more soft, more have more impact protection as he's getting a bit older. Maybe he, that's what he feels like he needs. Essentially, I really like the performance on court. You don't feel high off the ground and you feel very well protected. And as I said, it's an extremely comfortable setup. So also stepping comfort is very, very high. I weigh about 85 kilograms. So maybe that also has an impact on how I can feel the cushioning. I don't know if it's the same if you're lighter, but also some of my teammates play with this shoe and they all said it feels extremely comfortable. Next up, moving on to support features of the shoe. They're the same on all colorways, so there's no difference like with the traction setup. We have um, a TPU panel on both sides of the shoe. You can see them here and here. And essentially they're responsible for lateral stability and they do contain your foot very well. Just maybe something for wide footers. If your midfoot is very wide, the panel can dig into your foot a little bit at first, but if you don't have the wide midfoot, you're perfectly good to go and support is also very nice. What we also have is a TPU spring plate for torsional support. So you should also be good in this direction. As you can see, it's rather hard to bend the shoe and there's almost no forefoot flex, which is something I actually like. I know some of you uh, want to have the forefoot flex and feel that the shoe moves with your foot. I don't like that I like when the shoe has a lot of spring back and a lot of torsional support. So for me, the KD16 is an awesome option in that regard. And something else in the support features, they have a very wide base, as you can see, which is rather unusual for KDs because they're usually 
rather narrow fit wise, which we'll talk about later. But as I said, a wide base, which is always good and also good for ankle support. Because for ankle support, essentially what you need is good lockdown, a one-to-one -one fit and a wide base. So if you do land on the side sometimes, the shoe will pull you back to the middle. For the last performance feature, we're going to talk about the materials. Essentially, it's what we've been used to from the KE line. It's a textile mesh with some synthetic leather parts, like we had all the way back from the KE 12 also. And it's very comfortable in my opinion, it's well ventilated and the biggest plus feature of those kind of materials is that they need almost no break in time. I'm actually tempted to say no break in time. With both my colorways, I took them out of the box, I practiced with them right away in a 5 on 5 practice, which is something I usually wouldn't recommend, but because they were so soft and felt so comfortable, I just went straight on and played with them and I had no issues, nothing was hurting, they weren't pinching anywhere. So as I said, almost little to no break in time on the materials, which is something I like, as you can play with them right out of the box, because usually when you get a new shoe, you're pretty excited to play with them and you don't want to wait and have a few like just shoot along sessions to break them in. Just talking about materials, something that is special for the on curl colorway is that as you can see, the, the laces here are different than usual Nike laces. Um, and they come with a second pair of your regular Nike standard laces that are used on hoop shoes and these are just a little bit extra for the colorway. Now last but not least, the fit and the weight of the shoe. For the weight, we'll check it out, I've got a scale right here. First we're going to talk about the grams and see on the right shoe we have, this is size 14 by the way, we have 516 grams which is 18.2 ounces and on the left shoe we have 18.25 ounces or 518 grams so pretty much the same weight for both shoes now let's move to the fit so as you know kds usually fit extremely narrow as kd has a really weird foot shape it looks kind of like a clown foot it's extremely long and slim um, that's why his shoes also usually are the best for narrow footers on the KD16, it's still a pretty snug fit. I would recommend going true to size, uh, but they are actually better for wide feet. Me, for example, I have extremely wide feet and I couldn't fit into the KD15. And with these, I actually had no issues and they actually felt kind of comfortable. As I said before, the only thing you can have to watch out is the midfoot. If you have a wide midfoot, this TPU panel can pinch a little bit, but I think you should be good to go. As I said, I recommend true to size, but if you have wide feet or it's problems with KDs in the past, then I would recommend trying them on the in-store. So overall, to sum up, the KD16, especially in this colorway, is probably my favorite performer right now. It used to be the Way of Way 10 and the LeBron 20, but this is definitely my favorite recent release. I like them more than the LeBron 21, which I'll also have a review on my channel if you want to check that out. So overall, to summarize, even though they changed up quite a bit from the KD15, especially in the cushioning setup, KD16 is still one of the best basketball shoes of the year and I can highly recommend you try them. Thank you for watching my review and my video. If you want me to review any other shoes, just let me know. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe. I would highly appreciate it as it helps out a lot. Leave a like and see you next time.